Welcome. Today I'm going to be looking at what is truly an original package in Bark. We're going to be looking at some of its key features and offering some tweaks for your system. I have done an introductory video to consult Selectrum Orderless and Prescient, but in that video I did not cover Embark or Marginalia. Now all of these packages can work together and it is recommended that if you are going to use these packages that you use them in tandem. Now Embark works with Vanilla Emacs, iComplete mode, Fido mode, Selectrum and it also works with Ivy. But although it can work with Ivy, it is not really recommended for Ivy or Helm users. Now let's get quickly to installation and configuration. It is recommended that one also installs Marginalia and to install these packages on your system, you can either add this code to your init.l if you use package.l or if you use straight, you can use these two lines of code. My basic configuration is being provided for you here. And you'll notice there that there's one important binding for a key action which we're going to look at in a moment in Bark Act, which I am hereafter going to abbreviate as EA. Now, what is Embark all about? Well, Embark is, is a program that allows you to act on either individual objects or targets or multiple objects or targets. And it takes a while for one to get one's mind around the concept. But basically in Emacs, there has traditionally been places where you do things. You do things in the mini buffer, for instance. You do things in Deard, etc, etc. But what Embark does is it sort of breaks that mold and allows you to act on different objects in different places. And so there's a lot more flexibility involved when it comes to performing actions within Emacs. Let's begin with commands on individual objects. Now, the traditional nomenclature that is provided on the official website is they speak about targets. But for me, it's probably easier to get the concept if you think of an object. An object is something that you can act on. And you can act on the following objects using Embark. You can act on a completion candidate in the mini buffer or in the completions buffer. For instance, let's choose any random completion candidate, Embark export. You could potentially act on that object. You can act on a file or a folder at point. You can act on a URL at point. A symbol at point. Now by a symbol we mean either commands, functions or variables. You can act on a buffer. You can act on packages. You can even act on an active region of text. For instance, I could act on this region of text if I wanted to. You can act on Unicode character names. Now, the actions that a person can perform on a given object depends on the characteristics of that object. And this is the same, for instance, in real life. Let me give you an example. Let's take an apple. There are a number of actions that I can perform in relation to an apple. I can buy an apple. I can put it in a bag. I can wash it. I can pick it up. I can touch it. I can cut it and dice it. I can eat it. There's a lot of things I can do to an apple. Uh, let's take another object, a keyboard. I can plug a keyboard in. I can buy a keyboard. I can clean a keyboard. I can type with a keyboard. But these different objects, by their very nature, determine certain actions in relation to them. Now, I can't uh, cut, chop up, and eat my keyboard. I can't type on an apple. And similarly, the actions that one can perform on an object depend on the characteristics of that object. This will become clear in a moment. Now let's look at the key help command that comes with Embark, Control H. Control H tells you what actions you can perform on any given object at a given time. So let me give you a very basic example. Let's go into Alt X. Let's look for this command package refresh contents. 
Let's invoke Embark Act by hitting our shortcut key, which is Control Shift A. And on the left hand side of the mini buffer, you'll see the word Act suddenly appear. That tells you that you are now set to act on this particular object. But what actions can we perform? Well, we would need to invoke our help command, Control H. And Control H will give you a list which will give you all of the possible commands that have been built in, which you can perform on that particular object. And you'll notice that on the left-hand side of each of these actions is a shortcut key. And in order to execute that command, you could do one of three things. You could either type at plus the shortcut key. You could use your up and down navigational keys and then press enter. Or you could use narrowing and completion. I'll give you a couple of examples in a moment. Just to note that one can get rid of the need to invoke Control H altogether by changing this variable here, Embark Prompter, to Embark Completing Read Prompter. And it may be useful for me just to show you how that works. Currently, the value is Use Action Key Maps. If we change that to Read Action with Completion, then what will happen is, let's just save this for the current session. Let's go into Alt X. Let's type or let's select Package Refresh Contents. Now, when I invoke Embark Act, immediately I have the possible actions that are associated with that particular object. And so I have bypassed Control H altogether. Okay, now I just want to actually revert that customization because I want, for the purposes of this video, to use the default settings. So let me go back to Customize. Now normally I would go Alt X, type Customize, go into my Customize User Interface, but there's an easier way, of course, with Embark. Control Shift A and C, and let's set it to Use Action Maps. Another thing that you can do is you can also install the program Which Key to help you to see which actions you can perform. And that's a trivial thing to do, but I would recommend that if you do install Which Key or if you do use Which Key with Embark, that you go to the Embark website and do a search for Which Key because there are one or two specific configurations that would need to go into your .emacs. The following link provides a list of objects and the default actions that a person can perform in relation to them. And this is very, very helpful. Just to give you a basic overview of some of the actions that you perform on, for instance, files, buffers, symbols, packages, Unicode character names, active regions, and so on. You don't need to learn all of those things because they are built into the help. Right, we've basically covered the theory of it. Now let's give you some simple examples. Let's take this URL. If we place our point on the URL and invoke Embark Act, in my case Control Shift A, you'll notice there it says there Act on URL. Now we invoke our help to see what actions we can perform. Control H and we've got a number of options here. I'm just going to click this one, Browse URL, and you will see that what it has done is it has opened that URL for us. To give you another example, one can quickly copy a file name to the kill ring using Embark. Let's take this rather lengthy file name. Let's say we wanted to copy this file name quickly to the kill ring. We would simply type Control shift a w and then we would simply paste it using Control y That's a very helpful thing, especially if you are in a deared buffer and you want to copy a path. Another thing that one can do is one can quickly invoke query replace on an object. Take this name Susan, which I have deliberately misspelt. Let's invoke Embark Act. Control Shift A, then Alt Shift Percentage, and let's replace Susan with Susan. One can insert at point a duplicate of a line 
that is in the same buffer but far away from point. Now this is a lovely little feature and it works in tandem with consult line. Now let's place our cursor where we want this duplicate line to appear. Let's place it there. Now in this file I've actually placed this duplicate line at the bottom of the file and we're going to find that duplicate line and we're going to copy it here. So let's invoke the command consult line which I have bound to Alt S L. Let's type the words dupe. There you'll see the line there. Duplicate this line at point. Now we select that line. We invoke Embark Act. Control Shift A. We go Control H. And the command that we want is Embark Insert. And you'll notice what has happened is duplicated the line at point. Now another thing that you can do is you can open a file in its external application. Now normally in order to access files and folders one would either use Control X, Control F or go into DIRD, which is my preferred method and I would search for a folder just to save me time and I would then go into that folder and so on. But of course there's a much easier way with Embark. You would simply invoke Embark and click F and we're in the folder of our choice. Now let's go down to this file here, Plato Complete Works, and let's open it in our external application. It's Embark Act plus X. The real power of Embark comes when you act not on single objects, but on multiple objects. And the official nomenclature for multiple objects is candidate sets. In other words, a set of objects that you are able to act upon. Now, let me give you some concrete examples of this. Let me invoke all Grome in my mini buffer. Now, I do that and I have a list here of all of the commands that come built in to this program all Grome. Now, that is a set of objects that potentially I could act upon. Now, what sort of actions are there for me in terms of multiple objects? Well, there are three commands that work on multiple objects, but there are only really two that you need to worry about. The first one is called Embark Collect Snapshot, which produces a buffer listing all the current candidates which one can peruse and act on. So for instance, let's type that org roam again. Let's go into Embark Act and let's go to Embark Collect Snapshot and press Enter. And you'll see what has happened. It has produced a buffer which lists all of the current candidates. And you can browse through those and you can act on those candidates as well. The second command that acts on multiple objects is the Embark Export command, which is the one that I use more, more often, which tries to open a buffer in an appropriate major mode for the set of candidates. So for instance, if the candidates are files, it will try to export the files and produce a DEAD buffer. If they are buffers, you will get an iBuffer buffer. If they are packages, you get a buffer in package menu mode. I'll illustrate this for you in a moment. And then the last uh, command that works with multiple objects is Embark Collect Live. And this would not really be used as a general rule if one is already using Selectrum. And just to note that sometimes these commands end up producing the same effect. Now, Let's look at some examples of this. I am doing currently a series of videos on the set of packages, Consult, Selectrum, Embark, etc. And I've created a number of files in my Orgrom directory and I jump from one file to another in order to see the information that I've captured in those files. Now, I can create a very nice list of those files using Embark. So let's type in the string and you'll see there there's a list of all the files that I'm currently working on in this particular series. Now let me export all of those files to a buffer. 
using uh, Embark. So it's Control Shift A, Control H, at is the action key, and then capital E. And you'll notice that we have created a buffer. I'm just going to move this buffer down because this buffer is just going to be for our purposes today, just to help in order for us to navigate but easily between these files. Now let's say I want to open this file and then I want to go to this file, that file, that file, that file. Isn't this absolutely wonderful? One can also run multiple commands in quick succession. For instance, let's go into Alt-X, let's type in version. Now, what I like to do sometimes is just keep a check on all the versions of important programs in my system. Let's export this list of functions. Very nice, let's pull it down a little bit. Now let's say that I wanted to see what my latest version of Emacs was. It's uh, 27.1. What's my latest version of Org Mode? 9.3. Overroam version 1.23. Ice Spell Check version 3.1.2. See, that hasn't been updated for quite a long time. And so that's really just incredible what you can do with that. Another powerful feature is that you can export the results of a grep or a rip grep buffer. For instance, if you were to use consult grep or consult rip grep, I prefer grep myself. So let's give you an example. I have bound consult grep to alt s g. Let's type my aunt Maud and we have three hits. Now let's export that to a buffer. And we can actually edit these results by invoking E. And I can do that because I have WGREP installed as well on my computer. So in fact, let's just change this to Flink. Let's save our changes. And the nice thing to note here is that Embark simply uses the normal occur and GREP mode. There's some additional notes there for your own edification and those are my resources. So in a word, Embark is an extremely flexible, powerful and original program. It's a program that breaks the mold in terms of having to go to a particular place to do certain things. It allows you to act on individual objects and it allows you to act on multiple objects. It can do a lot of things, but in fact, the concept is a very simple and a very basic one. You will find that as you get to learn the shortcut keys that it becomes second nature to you.